I got my ethno gene results back and I am very impressed. I am highly recommending this company. My uh, results were very precise. Uh, they were the most detailed ethnicity, ethnicity analysis for autosomal DNA ancestry on the market, in my opinion. And Ethnogene is a new player. Um, there, you know, there, there are a lot of companies that uh, um, you can upload your raw autosomal DNA file to and they will give you ethnicity estimates. But a lot of these companies are, uh, I would say, a little more conservative. And you can say that Ethnogene is a bit speculative uh, because they do go into you know, a lot more granular detail uh, regarding your different ethnicity, regarding your ethnicity and your uh, possible ancestry um, compared to global, modern global populations. But I like that actually uh, because I've read reviews and people are finding that it actually does align a lot with their actual ancestry. Now I am, um, I'm Ashkenazi. So, uh, you know, I did the Ancestry DNA test in uh, 2014 and it came out 91% Ashkenazi and then they did the upgrade with 13,000 more reference populations and my, uh, the number for me changed to 100% Ashkenazi Jewish. Now that's an example of, uh, I think, Ancestry DNA of a company that's a little more conservative. So, and you're also not getting to the admixture underneath here, uh, the Ashkenazi ethnicity. Um, and so I'm just going to go over my results here. What now? There was there was a back. Uh, a lot of people were frustrated because Ethnogene uh, was down, was not accepting new customers for for many months. They were uh, they had a backlog of uh, previous customers that they had to take care of, and it took months. So um, it's unfortunate because uh, this is a great company, and I think they really upped their game after this you know, these, uh, this backlog. And now the timing is much better. Uh, from what I've heard previously, it took, uh, it took a lot longer to get your results. Now they say it takes five business days. And for me, it took five business days. And the, uh, the test um, is also on sale, the genetic uh, heritage report um, for $29.99, which is a great deal. And for me, uh, what I did was I asked uh, in the notes, I asked if they could um, uh, create an additional report without Jewish references. And so they, uh, they sent me the report with Jewish and an additional report without Jewish at no cost. So very impressive, uh, very impressed with this company and I highly recommend them. Um, so I'm going to just go over my report real quick. And, um, this is the this is the, my report with Jewish references. So, and they give a nice little introduction here about you know the history, um, you know genetic history of humans, and the DNA overview, autosomal, Y DNA, uh, MT DNA, you know how much uh, how much you know how much you inherit from your parents, from your relatives, and uh, it's really cool. I definitely recommend. Uh, reading the uh, introduction and learning about uh, um, DNA ancestry. And so here are my results overview. So um, now they, I also like that they go through your trace matches here too, um, which I've, you know, they, and they, they do, you know, very clear that the trace matches, uh, they do negate anything below one per smaller than 1% because it generally has a high degree of inaccuracy, but they do provide it for you as well. So I get trace ethnicity, Caucasus is Jewish, Turkish, Polish, Romanian, Terebin, which is a Bedouin group in the Sinai uh, and Negev deserts, and uh, Greek. Um, and here's my overall regional estimates. Now Central Europe, 80.5%. Most of that is obviously Ashkenazi. Um, Iberia, all of that is Sephardic. And Southern Europe, some of that is Italian and some of that is Jewish. And so let me just scroll in there, Southern Europe. And so I like they start with the regional estimates there. And then they get into your uh, specific ancestry estimates. And so I like how they start out with the, uh, you know, the, the pie here. And so kind of interesting, you know, 
they only give me 79.5%, 79.5% Ashkenazi Jewish. Um, but the rest is mostly other uh, Western Jewish uh, diaspora groups. So 6.8% Sephardic Jewish, um, uh, Talkim, um, Italian Jewish, 6.1%. And then at 3.6%, I'll just go in order you know, from highest percentage to lowest percentage, Italian South. And then Romaniot Jewish, which is Greek, the Jews of Greece, uh, Romaniot, um, the Eastern Mediterranean Jews, 1.8%. And then Italian North, 1.2%. Hungarian, 1%. And then if you scroll down, they will give you your the sub-regional population, which I think is the coolest feature of this report. And, uh, you know, for example, Ashkenazi Jewish, well, that's cent uh, Central and Southern Europe. Iber uh, Sephardic Jewish, uh, overall region Iberia, but that pin they, they pinpoint that to Belmont, Portugal. There's a a very unique Sephardic Jewish community in, in Belmont, in Portugal. A talcum, well, that they pinpointed that to northern Italy, <clears throat> um, and the Romania Jewish Greece, of course, and then so, and then Italian North Lombardy Piedmont region, and Italian South Puglia Calabria, and Hungarian Southern Transdanubia. <clears throat> and then they give a description, the ethnicity description. Um, I'm not sure the Ashkenazi description could have it has some improvement. I mean, they do indicate that you know sometimes Ashkenazi Jews have strong matches with Mediterranean populations. Uh, I would say Ashkenazi Jewish populations always have strong matches with Mediterranean populations. I've never seen a case where they don't. So that's a little bit misleading there. Um, but the other explanations are are, are really good. Um, they say you know talk about the Sephardic. They do have a little bit stronger uh, links to uh, the Middle East um, versus Ashkenazi. Uh, the Italkim are very close to Ashkenazi Sephardic Jews and neighboring Italian populations. Romania, the oldest Jewish community in Europe, mostly found in Greece, North Italy, South Italy, Hungarian. Okay, so that's, uh, oh, and then they do your archaic uh, human admixture results. So I guess I'm 1.20% Neanderthal. 0% Denisovan and modern human, 98.80%. And they break that down as well. Um, so pretty cool. And then uh, now I'm going to show you my uh, without Jewish, the results without Jewish. So the overall regional estimate without any Jewish references um, is 43.8% uh, Southern Europe. 39.4% Middle East, um, Central Europe, 8.1%, Eastern Europe, 4.6%, Western Europe, 4.1%. So we're talking about 40% Middle Eastern, but I would say it's probably higher because um, Southern Italians, uh, Sicilians, Greeks, and Cypriots do have um, Levantine Middle Eastern and North African ancestry. So, and, also, and on vice versa, Middle East, Middle Easterners have some degree of Southern European, Mediterranean European ancestry as well, admixture as well. So it might, it might wash out, it might even out, so that could be very accurate, but it also could mean that my Middle East could be a bit higher. But it's about what I expected, about 40, 60 Middle East Europe with most of the Middle East from the Levant and most of the Europe from Southern Europe. So let's... Again, I think that's just probably an, aver an average for Ashkenazi Jews, but it will vary by individual. So let's go to specific ancestry es estimates. And yeah, my top population is uh, Lebanese. And, uh, you know, that makes sense because Jews originated from the Levant, from the Eastern Mediterranean, and, um, you know, from the local Canaanite populations. And that's, that's where Lebanese originate from. Um, so... Uh, I'm just going to go in the percentage from highest to lowest um, and not how they do it, which is by you know, regional breakdown. So uh, my le uh, without, uh, again, without Jewish, my Lebanese, for me, Lebanese, 24.9%, Italian North, 20.4%, Italian South, 15.8%, Hungarian, 8.1%, Syrian, 5.2%, Palestinian, 4.9%, Polish, 4.6%, for, for it, for it, Ilian, 2.6%, German, 2.4%, Terebin, 2%, which is a Bedouin tribe, 
uh, which I uh, discussed before, and Sicilian 2%, Greek 1.7%, French South 1.7%, Jordanian 1.4%, uh, Cypriot 1.3%, and Turkish 1%. Um, and then you get into the subregions here, and there's uh, Le the Lebanese subregions, um, the Syrian, Palestinian, Jordanian, Terebin, like I said, Sinai and, and Negev, uh, Turkish, Greek, uh, Cypriot, Italian South, Italian North, Sicily, the Sicilian is from uh, Catania. For, for, for Ulian, which uh, they describe as uh, sort of a northern Italian population, I believe in northeast Italy, that's a bit more genetically, has more genetic affinity with Central European populations. French South, Hungarian, German, um, and Polish. And uh, for me, you know, this really kind of like uh, confirms my belief in the Rhineland theory of Ashkenazi Jewish migration from um, the Levantine Middle East to Southern Italy, uh, probably arriving in uh, Apulia in Southeastern Italy, the port of Apulia, Puglia, and then making our way up north, up to Northern Italy, up to the Rhineland, Rhineland Fats, Rhineland Palatinate, and then Eastern migrations to other parts of Central Europe, and then Eastern Europe, Poland, Austria, uh, you know, Hungary, other areas. Um, and so, because you have the you know Lebanese as my top population front percentage, but also closely followed by Southern Italy and Northern Italy, and then smaller percentages from Central and Eastern Europe. So uh, anyway, I again, oh yeah, here's the you know pop description of Lebanese, which they say you know out of all the Arab populations in the Middle East, the Lebanese genetic cluster is closest to the average Jewish genetic cluster due to ancient common origins. Which, of course, uh, you know, the Lebanese come from the Phoenicians, which, you know, were basically a Canaanite tribe, which is where the Israelites, what the Israelites were, basically a Canaanite tribe. Um, yes, yeah, so here, you know, then you have the, these other Palestinian, you know, close, genetically closest to Sephardic and Ashkenazi Jewish populations, Bedouins, Lebanese Druze, Southern European groups, Jordanians, and Saudi Arabians. There's a the Terebin. Genetically cluster and overlap with Palestinian, Egyptian, Jordanian, and Saudi populations. Closely related to other neighboring Levantine groups, native to the Sinai Peninsula and Negev regions. Turkish, talking about their, you know, Central Asian admixture and Turkish populations. Greek, but also Turkish populations are also, you know, similar to, you know, populations in Greece, the Balkans, and Southern Italy, reflecting a shared Mediterranean ancestry. Um, Cypriot. Close to uh, Greek, Cretan, Turkish, Lebanese, Syrian, Sicilian, and South Italian populations, Italian South. And they do say Italian populations typically also, Southern Italian populations typically also display notable percentage matches with Middle Eastern populations of the Levant region, North Africa. Uh, there's Northern Italy, Cis Sicilian, uh, uh, talking close to Greeks, non-mainland Greeks, Greek Islanders. Uh, Ferulians, or I said they're... Uh, Closer related to Austrians and Slovenians rather than other Italians. French South, Hungarian, German. And there, again, there's some admixture seen between uh, some Hungarians and uh, Northern Italians. Uh, German and Polish. And thank you for watching.